I think this calls for a yeehaw. Tell me about a yeehaw. Yeehaw! <laughs> yeehaw! Yeehaw! There you go. Look at this. This is called an Empress Splendor tree. I planted it last year and I thought it had died, but alas, see, look, all these dead branches, but beneath it, it grew again. Reminders of this regeneration are literally everywhere here on the land. And I'm beginning to see regeneration as the very structural integrity that holds all life together. It's that persistent coming forth of newness in every aspect of nature, including within me and you. It's baked right into the very beingness of all things, the mythopoetic death rebirth that every human must go through in order to let go of the old and become anew. So you'll see the same type of regeneration coming through on the farm and the farmer, as well as within both of our guests today. So welcome to episode four, Regeneration, a story of connection. We come from the soil, go back to the soil, turn the world around. Go back to the mother, turn the world around. As above, so below. I'm reminded of what Wendell Berry said. The soil is the great connector of our lives, the source and destination of all. We've got Rylan Engelhart from Kiss the Ground. He's gonna do what he does best and tell us about the story of soil and its infinite importance within the ecosystem. Kiss the Ground is a education and advocacy nonprofit for soil and regenerative agriculture. My life was touched in a profound way watching a panel discussion of experts talk about can human beings sustain themselves on planet Earth? This moment of clarity and connection occurred for me where I saw the way that plants, trees, soils, microorganisms, animals, humans are all part of this great carbon cycle through the possibilities of regeneration. A couple years ago, I called you and I was like, uh, I'm getting a farm. I remember. You remember what you said? You're like, how, how deep are you gonna go or something? You're like, <laughs> are you going all the way or is it just sort of a... Is it light? Am I going, getting a farm light? <laughs> but this is me now getting into the soil and getting into the compost and really starting to apply some of this. I mean, I see stories of regeneration every single day here on the farm, every single day. I have trees and I'm like, oh, they're dead. And then lo and behold, no. There's life and it's coming from the death. It's coming from who knows where because it's, it's inherent in life is that potential of rebirth. I think that even from like the, the lowest low, you're, you're always gonna have a rising from the ashes. Regenerative farms are those that are modeled to the highest degree after natural cycles. And the goals of these farms are three things profitability, sustainability, and productivity. Over the last eight years, 50% of U.S. farmers have lost money on their farms. And the segregation of farms into tree, plant, livestock separated has undermined the cycles of balance that naturally create sustainability. With monoculture systems, the long-term productivity of the land is undermined. We need to empower the farmer. Doug Wilmore from World Tree has been working with his whole heart to bring regenerative practices into farming while also ensuring that the interests of the farmers are looked after. World Tree helps farmers turn their farms into carbon capture sinks by planting the Empress Splendor, the fastest growing hardwood tree that absorbs carbon at an astonishing rate. They also emphasize the value of bringing back biodiversity intercropping and helping farmers reconnect to the vision of the ecosystem as a living, breathing whole. Doug, thanks for coming. I'm really excited because I'm now gonna be an Empress Splendor farmer myself. It's so great that you've taken this on. You're now our second most famous farmer after President Carter. Wendy Burton, the founder of World Tree, the key reason that she founded World Tree was to protect old growth forests. 50% of the world's lumber still comes from native or natural forests. 
that's mind-boggling. That 50% needs to come down to uh, 5%, maybe at the most, for managed harvest for the health of the forest and so on. And you're basically creating a two-acre timber farm that draws down carbon, but then also protects old growth forests. Reintroducing forestry to agriculture, and especially this kind of tree, is one of the ways that we do that. So we just got a really special delivery. Andy Norris of World Tree delivered these beautiful, beautiful seedlings. These are the Polonia Empress Splendor babies. Look at them, how gorgeous. The Empress Splendor tree is the fastest growing tree in the world. And so just to give people an idea, in 10 years here on your property, you'll have trees that are 80 feet tall that are 20 inches in diameter. And then those trees produce amazing, beautiful finished lumber. And they not only do that, but they sequester just tons and tons of carbon in their growth process. And then they're sequestered in those products. And so that produces a tremendous amount of revenue for the landowner and the, the farmer, for investors. And then the really amazing thing is when we harvest the Empress Splendor tree after 10 years or so, it regrows from the stump. So you get up to six to seven harvests out of just one seedling that you plant in the ground and up to 60 or 70 years of carbon sequestration and truly renewable lumber. The United Nations has said, you know, we have somewhere between 50 and 55 years left of soil on planet Earth for all the cultivated soils that we're, we're growing food on. You know, just the increase of organic matter uh, by 1% can hold 20,000 more gallons of water in one acre through adding the mulch, adding compost, and also channeling those carbon sugars through the photosynthesizing cover crops. Use your hands, put it in there. Yeah, pack it down a little bit. So why do why do cat eat? Because it gets thirsty and it wants to drink the water, so we want to help it. Say that stat again. One percent. For one percent increase of soil organic matter in our soils on an acre of land, that acre of land can now hold in it twenty thousand more gallons of water. And let that land. Woo! Up to a third of all carbon emissions in the world are coming from commercial agriculture. And that can be completely reversed. It's taken us maybe four or 500 years to prove to ourselves that the modern form of agriculture, forestry, is unsustainable. We need to bring plants and trees and animals back together on the same piece of property. So we really need this regenerative movement to take over that would just make a major impact in our world, not just in the taste and health of the food, but the impact on the planet. The answer is yes. Yes, we will. Okay. <laughs> I love the concept of earth speed and that it really is, you know, starting from your decomposition of identity, and you know, career, and you know, decomposing you back into uh, this speed of learning with the earth, and speed of learning with this farm and this ranch and this project. And there's so much genius in just showing up and participating. It's so much more when it's coming from lived experience that you can then share from. I think this calls for a yeehaw. Tell me about a yeehaw. Yeehaw! 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 Oh, there you go. Oh, brother, come here. Come here, give me a hug. Yeah. Oh. To be truly regenerative, a farmer needs to understand they are a part of the ecosystem, not apart from it. We are privileged today to be able to cherry pick from all of history and all of its blunders or from all of history's blessings and choose what to leave behind and what to take forward with us. We can move away decisively from the logic of linear systems that have fragmented us from the world 
and each other. I mean, my whole life was turned around when I began to see the world and my purpose in it from a regenerative lens. My exploration into regeneration has changed how I live, how I farm, how I feel the world. So thank you for being a part of that journey because I feel so close to you. After all, we are all connected.